For a long time I've been hearing about secret societies. Some people claim they are harmful organizations and others say they are useful to society. I think their story is important and could be affecting our lives. There have always been secret societies to retain knowledge. In the Arab world, was completely fascinated by the idea of secret societies, Western secret societies. There are all sorts of secret societies. There are political ones, there are criminal ones, and indeed there are occult ones. The facts are there. It's just that we each sometimes interpret them differently. Secret societies are fiercely compartmentalized, but there's a level above that. That's where the real game is going on. Washington, D.C. was indeed laid out according to Masonic symbolism. Do secret societies exist? And are they trying to rule the world from the shadow? I have always thought of myself as a free thinker. I am always hungry for knowledge. When I was at school, my favorite subjects were mathematics, physics, and literature. I love numbers and shapes. And at the same time, I enjoy a good story. And I love mystery. Mysteries generally propel my curiosity and need to know. My curiosity made me think of what is called secret societies, like the Illuminati, the Freemasons, and many other secret societies they say have existed since a long time ago. And there are alleged records of some of them, and claims that their members reached as far as to rule nations, and stories about strange rituals exercised in their meetings. What are these secret societies? Do they really exist? And what is their purpose? When I started the journey to search for answers, I got lost. Lost between many secret societies. Each one has its own rules and objectives. The Freemasons, the Illuminati, the Rosicrucians, Skull and Bones, and many others we hear of, and maybe others we don't. So I decided I should start by talking to someone who did a lot of research on this topic. I reached David Icke. Maybe he can show me the way. Hi, David. You have investigated secret societies for a long time. Can you please tell me more about the origins of secret societies? There have always been um, secret societies, well, as far back as we can ascertain, because there's always been groups of people that wanted to retain secrets, secrets to hoard knowledge. If I have a certain highly important level of knowledge and you don't, I am in a position of power over you. So the objective of secret societies is actually to keep essential knowledge hidden from the public. We live in a world that actually is made up of two worlds. One is the world that the population live in, and that is limited in terms of the knowledge that it has. This knowledge is kept from the population by not allowing it into the public arena. and. This other world is made up of a global network of secret societies 
in which this knowledge is passed on through the generations of carefully chosen initiates at the core of the core, overwhelmingly coming from a network of interbreeding families. So being a member of a secret society, for instance, like the Freemasons, you would have access to knowledge that nobody else has? These secret societies are fiercely compartmentalized. You look at just the Freemasons as an example, the bottom three levels of degree, the so-called blue degrees, and there's 33 levels. Mm -hmm. and, and you only progress to the next level, which is what? The next level of knowledge, if that level decides you are worthy of it, or you're the kind of person that should have it. You have, uh, say, the Freemasons. You have the Jesuit order. You have the Knights Templar. And they appear, of course, compartmentalized in their individual pyramids. But there's a level above them. And at that level, uh, which it doesn't officially exist, that's where the real um, game is going on. What is written about the Templars is that they were formed in the Middle Ages. They were warriors. They say they invented banking as we know it, and they amassed incredible fortunes and they offered loans to kings and nations as a way to control them. Then it is said they became builders and pirates and grew more popular and powerful until they were outlawed by the King of France and their leaders were burnt at the stake. But many say they continued in secret and became more occult. It seems there are many secret societies who people believe are ruling the world or producing its leaders, like the fraternity called Ordo Novi Templi, or New Templars, that is said to be behind the rise of Hitler. The fraternity was founded by Jörg Lanz von Liebenfels, a racial theorist, and Guido von List, an occultist. Lynn Picknett is a writer and researcher whose work on secret societies is very useful. I think she could help answer a few questions. Hi, Lynn. You did an extensive research on the Templars. Yeah, yeah we did the research, yes. So what can you tell me about secret societies and their relation to power? There are all sorts of secret societies. There are political ones, there are criminal ones, and indeed there are occult ones. I always say that the paranormal is, thing, it, is things that happen, and the occult is things you choose to do. You know, so like join a society. And ritual magic, for example, which is all about focusing your will through rituals, and they hope to change the actual world through their will, whether or not they manage it or not is another matter. Do you think there is a link between secret societies and powerful political organizations, such as the Nazis? The Nazis had their roots in a sort of semi-mystical belief system called Ariosophy, which actually came from the 19th century, but built up in importance after the First World War when Germany was beaten. And Germany felt it needed to build up its national pride. So it, they became very obsessed with Ariosophy, which was basically the idea it, that the Aryan race was in a very ancient race that um, had ancient wisdom and had mystical roots um, and uh, was going to rule the world. So the idea of a unified identity and purpose could very well be one of the main reasons or motivations behind such groups. Actually, I think it's almost like part of human DNA in a way, is, is that you, you, know, you think I know something that they don't know, and then you say, you say, you say to somebody, do you want to know my secret? You know, and it's it's actually, it's power. It's quite interesting that you have uh, the United States of all places, you know, being actually founded by unapologetic Freemasons. I mean, you know, they, they were, you know, there was nothing sinister about them because at that time, certainly, the Freemasonic ideal was about enlightenment. So you have, you know, George Washington, you know, Benjamin Franklin, a huge number of, of the, the founding fathers of, were in fact Freemasons. They believed there is magic in symbols, no? Uh, Washington DC was indeed laid out according to Masonic um, symbolism to stamp the new center, the new capital, with the Masonic presence, if you like. And, and perhaps some of them did believe it, it did you know, protect it in some way. Everything is attached by a very thin thread. The facts are there. 
It's just that we each sometimes interpret them differently. What are we supposed to do? We can only speculate when there is a gap in the information. True, but there is a limit beyond which it's no longer speculation. It becomes just fertile imagination. According to certain research, some secret societies also existed in the Arab world. Some from a long time ago, like the Assassins and the Bakhtash. And it seems that they may have been an inspiration to some Western secret societies. And there are claims that some Arab Muslim great thinkers and figures were in one way or another linked to a secret society. We may hear negatively of the Freemasons and consider it an accusation, but we all admire some of their figures for their contribution to humanity. This can be surprising, especially when these figures are Arabs. This is something worth exploring. I will talk to Ihab Girmazi, an MIT researcher and Harvard PhD candidate. He can tell us about secret societies in the Arab world. It's, it would be very good to start by saying that seeing uh, Freemasonry and secret societies as a, a, a particularly evil uh, organization in the Arab world especially is mostly a product of the second half of the 20th century. But if we look at the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, we would see that the elite in the Arab world was completely fascinated actually by the idea of, uh, of secret societies, Western secret societies, and Western Freemasonic lodges. The first reason was that the Freemasonry is an elitist group that is interested in hiring and adopting as brothers uh, those who are proved that they are influential in their societies. The second reason, they are different from the colonial, materialist, racist program and perhaps most importantly, that they claim they had a spiritual aspect to them. Can you please talk to me a little bit about the decline of secret societies, especially in the Arab world? What happened to them? They were so popular and all of a sudden, everybody wants to stay away from them. The, the, the problem with Freemasonry, basically, when it, when it started, uh, one of them that included the elite, the elite starting having a problem with Freemasonry happened when the uh, colonialism ended. A lot of the local elite wanted to be, to be as far as possible from any Western lineage. Uh, the second reason, it's an important one, is actually the creation of the State of Israel. That uh, Zionism, in that sense, was always affiliated to some sort of a big Masonic world conspiracy. And linking Zionism and Freemasonry made it very difficult for a lot of Arab intellectuals to want to be affiliated to Freemasonry or to uh, acknowledge the fact that they were or they want to. The third one, perhaps, is that it is true that especially, and this is relatively new, in the, in the last 30 years, mostly, but since, the link between uh, Freemasonry and occultist societies and Zionism to a certain extent and imperial powers, that new network of some sort of a Western, all-powerful, secret organizations made it almost impossible today, not very difficult, to claim any affiliation uh, to Freemasonry without fearing uh, the repercussions of it because of that new uh, idea that was adopted by, by the public, that Freemasonry is an evil organization. It is normal that people gather, organize, keep secrets, and favor those who think like them. It's human nature to collaborate and partner. And this has served humanity well since the hunter-gatherer times, through the ages of the pyramids until the formation of modern states. Some groups may have taken it too far, others maybe not. That's why I'll keep asking questions. <laughs> 